Uh, good evening. Welcome to MCTV. My name is Chris Shelb, and I'm here at the H.H. Dow High School with Shane Parasi to cover the Saginaw Valley Wrestling Duel between your visiting Midland High Chemex and your Dow Chargers. Uh, just some quick facts. The Chargers come in tonight's meet with a record of 1-1, one and, one, and the Chemex are 0-2 oh in the Saginaw Valley League. Shane. That's right, Chris. Uh, despite the records this year, last year at this duel, uh, Midland actually won it. It was a nail biter. It definitely could have gone down to a coin toss. There was a lot of high flying matches and some good intensive wrestling. You know that Dow being the home team this year, they're definitely going to look to take back that crown. And uh, it's also the first night of the Parkinson's Awareness Night, so they're here to make a statement, but Midland's definitely not going to give that one up easily, Chris. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think this, tonight's cause is uh, just fabulous. Looks like we're going to jump right into the national anthem, so... Uh At this time, I think it'd be a great opportunity to kind of talk about our coaches. Um, for the Midland Chemex, Michael Donovan, this is his fifth season now with the Chemex. Um, you know, he, he really loves the sport. He's got a lot of passion for it. He even uh, wrestled at the collegiate level at Grand Valley State for three years. So he certainly brings that um, eagerness and, and that learning ability to his team, which is a great benefit. Um, he also has some great assistants, uh, Jason Revord and Jacob Hine, who uh, provide a lot of assistance in that in that wrestling room. And maybe what we can do is uh, we we can talk more about the uh, about the coaches as time permits. Seems like we're going to get going rather rather quickly, but uh, at least the boys are starting to jump around a little bit. Um, but however, I guess if if they're not going to go to the coin toss. Um, some of his other coaching awards for My Michael Donovan. 2016, he was the Saginaw Valley Coach of the Year, as well as in 2018. Um, some of his team accomplishments are in 2015, as well as in 2018, they were district champs. Uh, the 2016-2018 Saginaw Valley North Champions. However, this is unofficial, but I think someone has got records on that. The one thing that he really enjoys most about coaching for the Chemex is he loves to enjoy the kids work towards their goals just the relentless effort it takes he likes how that uh, that worth ethic work ethic from the sport can be you know brought into all of their life's efforts and uh, that will carry through them not only in high school but you know just through their day-to-day -day lives and that's just a great learning experience um, he likes most, you know, the, the thing that he likes to do with his team is uh, it, it just build team bonding. He, he's certainly passionate about that. And, you know, the kids like that as well. So they'll, they'll have great memories throughout their whole life. Um, this year, his team is definitely young and inexperienced. But that doesn't mean you won't see daily jumps in growth. It, um, that should just be a given and that will give great accomplishment to both each all of the wrestlers as well as the coaching staff. Um, you know, let's let's talk about uh, Coach Doyle for a second. 
Coach Doyle from uh, Dow High School, he's uh, still fairly new to the high school coaching. This is his second year. He hasn't been with Dow long enough to really leave his mark. The team's just now finally starting to come into their own. Uh, Dennis is known throughout Midland. Uh, he was the Jefferson Middle School uh, wrestling coach. He also is the assistant football coach here at Dow. And uh, he also makes a living as a teacher for Claire. Um, just uh, to reflect on how he likes to coach his team, um, you should uh, pay attention to how big the team grew as from last year. I'd say they, they almost doubled in numbers. They, they gained at least 10 good wrestlers. Um, and if you take a look at his son and his accolades and how, what he's accomplished without wrestling, not only in the sport but academically while he's in high school, you know, if he, uh, if he runs a tight-knit home like that, he's definitely going to run a tight-knit team. So uh, with an experienced uh, a coach who's, who's definitely left a legacy compared to a, a new dedicated coach like this, it's definitely going to be uh, an electric night. We're definitely going to see a lot of good wrestling here, and I, I can't wait to see what these guys bring to the table. Absolutely. But uh, right now we got our captains going out for the coin toss. Um, for those of you who don't know, the coin toss pretty much dictates who, uh, who gets to present first here um, while wrestling. When I say present, I mean uh, when the ref calls for the weight class to approach, it just shows which team is going to show their wrestler first. It kind of comes into play and, and how you present your wrestlers, and, and it really could affect the overall match, how the, how the duel ends up. Yeah, that's definitely the strategic play part of the game. And it looks like uh, Dow has won the coin toss. And we'll see how that plays out for them as the night proceeds. I believe we're going to start at, you said, weight class 130. I was, I believe it is 130, but the wrestlers I see warming up, I think, are fitting the 125 pound weight class. Correct, it is 125. It looks like for Midland Chemex, that's going to be River. River Etron, e who is a ninth grader. But we'll, we'll definitely see if uh, that strategic play comes in. And if, uh, if Dow, depending on who Dow shows. Looks like Dow is going to be showing a Robert Batha. Robert Batha is also a freshman. He has a little bit of wrestling experience. Right now, his record is two and five. He does come from Jefferson Middle School, so he is familiar with Coach Doyle. Also, one of Coach Doyle's assistant coaches, Nick Wardell, is very known throughout the community and his influence in the, the young athletes' lives here in the sport of wrestling. And so it'll definitely be interesting to see uh, his effect on the team, too. It is indeed uh, Mr. Batha coming out for Dow at the 125 pound weight class. And for the Chemex, it's, it's River Etron. Sorry about that, if I'm mispronouncing that. Immediately coming out, River's really heavy on the hands, takes Batha right down. Batha, like any experienced wrestler, goes right to his belly. Constantly moving, trying to get that hip separation from the bottom. Batha's doing a good job. Turns out, gets one point. Back neutral. Batha, nice way to nice way to fight thunder. those hands. Got into the leg, and and River was really good at defending there, putting his weight onto him. Heavy on that head. River just constantly sucking to that leg. Nice arm spin by Batha. Slipped on that a little bit, but both back up. Still neutral. Score two one for Midland High. River, another nice, solid, powerful takedown. Trying to, trying to work that half on the left side, see if he can run it over. Batha doing a lot of defending with the hips, not a whole lot of hand fighting oh, there. head pressure. There he goes, able to catch him. Here. Batha's got that, him caught, put his shoulders be. on the mat, that could be it. That could be the pin. Batha ended up catching Midland high and stuck him. That was definitely some good effort there by both guys. River, a very busy wrestler there. Uh, happens when you get high in this sport of wrestling. You can get caught and taken down just like that, even if you're winning the match. Anything can happen in the sport of wrestling. We saw it there, first match of the night. All right, moving to the 130 weight class. 130 pounds for Dow. Uh, we have listed a Sam uh, Popard, also a ninth grader with a record of two and five. Also comes from Jefferson Middle School. We have, we have two candidates at the 135, so it's either going to be Hunter Carey Spears or Daniel Revord. Uh, we also have a 
Haley Bates at the 130. Still waiting to see who, who the Chemex are gonna send out. And this is where that coin toss comes in handy. So this is going to be Hunter Carey Spears for the Midland Chemex. Hunter's a, Hunter is a, uh, a senior this year. He won the Hemlock last Invitational last weekend, which was a good accomplishment for him. He goes right in on the double leg and brings it right to his back on a half. That's some senior wrestling right there. Let's see if the freshman can bounce back. He does, he gets one. One of the philosophies from the Chemex is a lot of takedowns. Let them up, take them back down, especially in the first period. Hey, he wants his wrestlers to get some experience with that, so. You can take him down, Chris, you can win the match. Yeah. Right now, Dow's on their back, and uh, Midland keeps uh, getting their near fall, keeps letting him up. They're gonna run that takedown, as you just said. Good head fakes. Dow takes a shot, Midland stuffs it. Gets the turn here, and near fall is being awarded. Midland nice and high, a lot of forward pressure. Sam just trying to hang on. It's tough being a freshman going out, out, uh, out there against a, uh, a senior experienced wrestler. It's definitely a learning experience, especially in the uh, beginning of the year. Hunter's really come a long way from his, his onset in his wrestling career. He's, He's taken to almost full-time wrestling, you know, getting to that Greco and freestyle experience. So I think that's really helping him climb the ladder here. And Hunter gets the stick. Midland takes the lead with that. Oh, actually, nope, that ties us up. 6-6, six, six. that was two pins. Uh, for those of you who don't know, if you get a pin in a dual meet, that gives your team six points. If you win by a tech fall, that's a 15-point win. That awards your team five points. And there's also a decision and then a major decision, awarding your team three to four points. So right now we're tied two pin, one pin each, six, six is the score. All right, we're moving on to the 140 weight class. For our 140, 135, I'm sorry, 135. is Anthony Trevino. He is a, he's a junior, but uh, this is his very first year wrestling, so inexperienced, but he's quite an athlete. Definitely gets that experience and that drive from playing football. Out there for Dow, we have Luke Maldonado, an, an 11th grader with a record of one in six this year. Uh, no youth experience, but he's definitely going out there with some heavy hands. It looks like he's trying to bump up that record. Middling in on a really nice deep shot. Got extended though. Maldonado from Dow, able to sprawl out, extend him out, and spin around, get his two. It's good fundamental wrestling right there by both members. Maldonado. Get back to his feet. Good escape. Anthony Trevino definitely seems hard to hang on to. Nice shot, takes Maldonado right down to his butt. Another two points for the takedown for Midland High School. Got to get that breakdown to get, get him flat. Right now, a lot of hand fighting going on. Anthony Trevino, you see he's still got that forward pressure. He's got his weight on his knees, which coaches try to avoid doing that so you can keep your pressure forward, keep your weight on your toes. He's running around. He's got an arm bar is what it looks like. Arm bar in half, more than likely. He's trying to lift that elbow, get him turned over. Luke Maldonado stands right up, found a break in the defense, breaking the offense, stood right up, got himself one for an escape on that one. It'll be interesting to see how Maldonado handles the offense. Nice low single, takes him right to his butt. Luke Maldonado, another two points for Dow there. The score right now uh, appears to be 5-3 Dow in the individual match. This period just about up. End of the period, 5-3, Dow has the lead. Nice shot by Luke Maldonado right there at the end. Definitely surprised the, what seems to be the more experienced guy on the mat. I think we're definitely uh, gonna have a good match here. Let's see if both these wrestlers can keep up that intensity and uh, see if we can get a good match out of this one. Midland's choosing the down position. 
key for Midland here is to get away, get one point. If you can get two, great, but just give the one point escape. Luke Molinau has got to hang on with such a narrow lead. Oh my, nice switch by Anthony Trevino. Definitely surprised Luke, almost took him to his back. Again, back in that arm bar half position, really riding on that shoulder more than a half. Uh, he's trying to spin around, trying to twist that upper body, see if he can't expose his head to the mat. I'm not sure what the call is here. Potentially dangerous. Uh, I think it's uh, they're challenging the score. Midland Chemics are challenging the score to make sure that the score is correct. Chris, you said Anthony's a uh, first-year wrestler as well, correct? That is correct. All yeah. right, so we got two first-year wrestlers. One definitely seems to be more physical, but they're both staying very busy. They both have found what seems to be their own style of wrestling. Let's see which one comes out on top. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's, it's an even matchup, which makes for, for excitement for all of the crowd. Absolutely. talking to their coaches, each wrestler trying to figure out what they need to work on. Trying to critique their game so someone can get the upper hand here. There might actually be a clock discrepancy. The clock is reading all zeros right now. Score is still 5-3 with Dow in the lead. wrestlers still just getting an experience from their coach things simple things to work on this might be a good opportunity to uh, talk about the MC TV network uh, you can catch all the high school sports action on MC TV this winter MCTV volunteers and staff will broadcast the Midland versus Dow basketball games and hockey games. Please visit the www.cityofmidlandmi, all one word, dot gov backslash MCTV and www.midlandps.org for more information. In case you miss them, catch replays of wrestling, hockey, basketball, and many other events on MP MPS TV, channel 190, or check the Midland Public Schools YouTube channel to watch all of these games in beautiful high definition. Still no action after the discrepancy. Uh, the score now appears to be 4-2. Nope, now 5-2. Yep, they're definitely fixing something with the clock right now. There we go. Score 5-5. Five, five. Um, <clears throat> Midland High had ended up scoring a switch right there off the whistle. Uh, it looks like they took 20 seconds off the clock. Uh, Dow goes down now that Midland High was in control. Score 5-5. Five, five. And resume to action. Luke Maldonado trying to get right up to his feet, but that forward pressure coming from Anthony Trevino is just uh, really good right now. He's just constantly driving this guy over his hands and to his face, making sure he cannot get away or score any points. Maldonado's doing a great job of keeping hand control. The wrestler's just so ineffective without his hands. Right. You can't expect to be on bottom and get any points unless you get hand control. That's pretty much rule number one when it comes to wrestling. You want to score points, control some hands. Trevino's got to get him back to the mat extended. Don't let Maldonado get those knees underneath him. Trevino trying to flatten him out with those double arm bars, see if he can't run him over. Still got a two-on-one situation here. Luke Maldonado's at risk of getting a stalling call. He's got to clear his hips. He's got to try and get away. Him making a stand up. That was a good, nice job by Luke Maldonado getting an escape. Nice shot of Score right now. 6-5 by Dow. Dow takes a shot. Good scramble by Midland to come around, get the two. 
Luke Maldonado down right now. Uh, should be 5-7. Score reading 6-7. Oh, I'm sorry, that is correct. 7-6. Midland High is up. You want to escape. Dow High scores. Ties it back up 7-7. Seven, seven. Three seconds remain in this period. It'll be Dow's choice. Man, these freshmen are definitely keeping a high pace match going. It's definitely uh, makes it entertaining to yeah, watch for all exciting. these fans out there. 7-7 seven, seven going into the third period. Really, you couldn't ask for a better match right now, especially with young guys. It's really encouraging to see young guys in the sport go out there and just give it their all. It shows that they're hungry. They really want to make a, make a name for themselves. It's like both, both wrestlers are trying to catch their breath a little bit, so they're definitely putting the effort in. We got a locked hands call on Midland. Locking hands around the body is something you can't do when you're in the top position unless you have a, he a head in that um, lock. That is an illegal move. One point will be awarded to Dow. We stop the action and reset from the last position we were in. That's Dow on bottom, Midland high on top. And Dow took the lead with that. They are up now, eight to seven. Actually, they just awarded Dow one more escape points, so they're still on their feet. So now we'll start in a neutral position. Midland coach decided to let Dow up, give that one point to Dow, gives him a two point lead. He's really hoping for a takedown from his guy here, just tie it back up. Trying to clear those hands, trying to take a shot. Anthony Trevino right now needs to stay busy more than ever. Hopefully catch a stalling call on Dow. Way to clear those hands, nice penetration shot, mm -hmm. double leg right to his back. Two points for Midland High and Anthony Trevino. That ties it up, nine to nine. It'll be interesting to see what the Midland High coach does here, what he wants to do. Looks like he's let him work on top for a minute. Oh, it's like coach, Midland coach is telling him to cut him, cut him, cut him, which means release him. Once he, he feels confident that his wrestler can get a takedown again. All right, Midland cuts the Dow wrestler, gives him one point for an escape. Now, Dow High is up 10 to 9. Midland needs to get a takedown here, needs to get some points. We've got 40 seconds left in the match. Definitely coming down to the wire for Midland and for Dow. Both guys cannot mess up here. Dow's in on a leg, hanging on tight. Oh, Anthony Trevino gets pushed to his hips, but remains in control. Still neutral, no one has definite control. Trevino spinning, spinning, spinning. And Luke Maldonado of Dow just hanging onto that leg for dear life. Couldn't do much more here right now as time winds down with a one point lead. Anthony Trevino ends up spinning around, gets the two points for Midland High. Midland has a lead, 11-10. Dow needs to get up and get moving with five seconds left. Luke Maldonado looks gassed, looks pretty tired. He's just hanging on right now. Time. He, he will take the stall call if it's awarded to him. So. Absolutely. Good match, good match. Both wrestlers. 11-10 is the final. Two first-year wrestlers. What an awesome match between two new guys. Definitely, definitely enjoyed that one. Yeah, that was great. Going up to the 140-pound weight class uh, for Dow. We have an experienced wrestler by the name of Dane DeLong. He is an 11th grader this year. He's a junior in high school with a record of two and five. Uh, experienced wrestler. Didn't quite hit his mark last year, but he's certainly trying to make a name for himself this, uh, thus far. And for the Chemex, we have Daniel Revord. He's, uh, he also has a lot of experience. He's been wrestling probably 10 years now, coming up through the youth program, the local youth program. Um, you know, he's, he's uh, really showing a lot of growth from when he started. He, he also is an advocate into the track as well as the cross country, which keeps him in shape all year long. Mid the high coming in heavy with those hands. Cleared the hands, comes in for a nice deep single leg. Standing up with it, Dane sprawling out, trying to collapse on those hips. Midland with the constant motion, takes Dow to their back. Two points, belly down for Dow. Two points, Midland High. Midland High is up 2 nothing right now. Daniel Vord definitely looks like a very busy wrestler. He's got those heavy hands from the feet. Doesn't even hesitate on the shot and just kept moving. 
Chris, if there was one thing my coaches always screamed at me while it was in high school wrestling, it was continuous motion. Keep moving and chain wrestling. Chain wrestle. I think uh, Mr. Revord showed an, uh, a great example of that. Really worked for that takedown and got it. Looks like he's going for a, a chicken wing. Chicken uh, wing and bar. Arm bar. Yep, yep, there it is. Able to run it around. Dane fighting hard. Yep. Not exposing his back yet. We have not broke that 90 degree plane. You have to break 90 degrees in order to get near foul points. This year is a new rule that uh, it only requires two points of contact for the wrestlers to be in the green portion of the circle. If any two points of contact, either the Midland Chemic or the Dow, they can still acquire the pin, near foul points, and the wrestling will continue. Daniel Rivar got five seconds of near fall there. That will be three points awarded to him. Assume. Really working the edge of the mat there. Dane's got to try and hope to squeeze out. Or oh, oh, Dane gets pinned right pin. at the edge of the mat. That's that new rule that can really screw you over if you do not pay attention to the rule book this year. Nice job by Mr. Daniel Revord, sticking with it. Good, solid wrestling. Again, another good match by both teams. And that gives Midland High the lead. Right now, the current score is 15 to six. The current team score, that is. Again, we expect some key matchups, but I, I think it's really gonna depend on both teams, on who shows first or presents themselves, on uh, which wrestler each coach is gonna send out. Going to the 145 pound weight class, we have Caleb Studebaker from Dow. He's also a junior. Uh, current record this year is 0-2, so you know he's definitely hungry to get that first win. Uh, very uh, experienced wrestler here for Dow. Saginaw Valley League placer, regional and state qualifier. And he maintains a 3.7 GPA. For the Chemics, we have Lorenzo Perez. Uh, unfortunately, he has no experience whatsoever. This is his very first year. He is a freshman. Um, he's had a couple JV matches, and um, at least that's getting some mat time. He shows a lot of promise in the wrestling room. Um, I, I expect good things to come from, from Lorenzo. Again, his drawback for this particular match is probably just gonna be his experience. You know, Caleb has an experienced guy with those heavy hands. He's got in on an ankle pick, but uh, Lorenzo Perez is definitely doing a good job defending against his experienced wrestler. He's keeping his hips, he's staying square, he's fighting his offense. Um, definitely impressed with what, uh, what, what the coach, coach is doing there at Midland High. Caleb working an overtime, trying to get that inside trip. Get a good sprawl. Front headlock for Caleb. Nice shuck by Caleb from Dow. Two points for the takedown. Looking that cross wrist. Caleb just trying to run that pressure forward. You know, it's great seeing a freshman go out there as a first year going against a, an experienced junior and actually putting forth as much effort as he is already. You know, you can tell he's not intimidated. He's going to go out there and give everything he's got. And right now the score is reflecting with a 2-0 uh, with 30 seconds left in the first period. Right up to his feet, Sudebaker, nice return to his butt. Lorenzo doing a good job working those hands. That's about his only defense right at the moment. Got to get to your feet. Keep sitting to his butt, trying to prevent, or trying to make that distance, that hip separation. Gets a little too far away. Caleb sucking him back. Good catch by Caleb. No near fall points awarded. Wow, Caleb just coming back with a hand behind his back and ripping him to his back. Throws in a cradle, gets the pin for Dow High. That was definitely a show of strength and momentum right there. That's the key there. That was just a lot of brute strength. And sometimes that works just fabulous. Absolutely. That brings the current team score 12 to 15 with Midland still in the lead by three points. All right, we're gonna move up now to the 150 weight class. And for the, for the Chemex, it looks like it's gonna be John Hine. He's a freshman, but uh, definitely has a lot of youth experience. His uh, brother 
is on the team, Sam Hine, and also his uh, older brother, Jacob Hine, is assisting coaching. So wrestling is definitely in the Hine family. This matchup here has taken place on more than one occasion in the youth setting. Um, this, this will be exciting. Wrestling for Dow, we have Aiden Wardell, also a freshman, very experienced wrestler. His father is actually the assist, or is assisting with Dow this year. Um, Aiden Wardell has some freestyle experience. Uh, he also plays uh, football, and he, he's accomplished quite a bit in the youth program. Uh, as you said, Chris, these two have definitely had their fair share of matches. They know what to expect from each other. It's going to come down to heart and technical skill to see who comes out on top for this one. As you can see, both these wrestlers are being aggressive. They're definitely not trying to make a mistake, knowing that the other wrestler will more than likely capitalize on it, given their experience. Midland High with a heavy collar tie and an underhook right there. It's going to be interesting to see the uh, offense he decides to run from here. Aiden Circling gets in on a leg. Nice Midland wizard. High, hard wizard. Aiden trying to drop those hips behind uh, John Hines. They end up going out of bounds. No points awarded. This will be a very strategic match. Rumor has it that on the mat, Aiden's a very patient wrestler. He will wait for his opponent to make a mistake. He'll run his moves the way he knows how to run them and just try to find that flaw in his opponent's defense. So he's going to keep the pressure on. He's going to keep rotating. He's going to keep moving until uh, John Hines, if he does, make a mistake. That's a really smart way to wrestle. Good John slide Hines, by. John Hines, nice outside slide by. He's trying high. to keep his hips. Two points for Dow. I'm sorry, Aiden Wardell with, uh, performed a nice slide by there. They go out of bounds. Dow's on top. Uh, they left out of bounds with control. Dow did. And then starting down. Ten seconds left in the first period. Score two to nothing. I think we have blood time. Blood time. Looks like we got a little bit of uh, a little bit of blood John on John's Hines. arms there. Unfortunately, John is notorious for that. Actually, all the Hines they they uh, they do tend to bleed from their nose on a regular basis. Maybe that's what makes them unique. Just like that, got them cleaned up. Back Excellent. to the wrestling. Stand nice up. stand up from yep. John Hine, controlling those hands. Scramble position here on the edge of the mat. No break in contact. Aiden was able to keep control as time wore down. That was definitely a close one, but no points awarded. Dow still has the lead 2-0. Midland High choosing down. Another slight clock malfunction. Looks like they got it fixed now. Nice explosiveness right off the whistle from both wrestlers. That's one thing I definitely love about watching experienced wrestlers is that they're always moving, they're always exploding and trying to create that space. Aiden not allowing a whole lot of hip separation, followed him right to the mat. John looks like he was trying to fish for a leg there. Aiden's got a half and a chicken wing, trying to run that right over John's head. John's not going to give it up that easy. Aiden, every bit of pressure he could put on that shoulder, he did. He's getting the turn, and the near fall is being awarded. It's really hard to fight that pressure. Aiden, as you can see, is pushing that head, lifting that head with his knee trying to prevent uh, John Hine from bridging, see if he can't get the fall for his team, can't get the pin for his team. The only thing Aiden will have to worry about is figure four in the head, which he did not. It was close, but he did not. Three points awarded for near fall for Dow's Aiden Wardell. John Hine able to fight off his back, get back to his belly. Score 5-0, Dow in the lead. He's got that position locked up again. Aiden Wardell with an armbar chicken wing, ran it over the same shoulder, got that same pressure, really driving those shoulders down. 
really a tough position to get out of when you're in it. Aiden Wardell awarded three more points near fall. John Hine fighting from the belly again. He's trying going, to fish for that chicken going wing. Going back to it. Chicken wing arm bar. See if he can't get it one more time. Well, you got to go with what's working. Yep, absolutely. Let's make three turns for Aiden Wardell so far. John, John got his arm free. End of the period. That should bring the score 11 to zero with Dow in the lead. Aiden Wardell running turns off the same series. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's right, right absolutely. Dow, Dow's decision was to go neutral Dow and be on their feet. Midland's John Hines definitely got to flip a switch here and figure something out. Last double. In deep on a single leg right now. Transition from that double to that single. Aiden Wardell pushing that quarter. Nelson trying to push that head through the hole, yeah. looking for Get, a Michigan finish. Getting them turned. Aiden reaching around for that leg, maybe trying to pull on one of his posts, see if he can't get him to collapse that hip and fall down. There it is, that Michigan finish. Chinning down that Chin shoulder. Pressure. Dropping his hips, putting that pressure down. Looking for the fall, but essentially the match is a technical, technical pin. Aiden, see if he can't seal the deal before the tech fall is awarded and get six points for his team instead of five. And that's yeah, the nice. match. Three points awarded for Aiden Wardell. Technical fall, that's five points for Dow. I'm sure these guys will see each other once again throughout the season, so. Throughout their high school careers. Absolutely, yeah, that's true. Aiden Wardell definitely showed that technical wrestling that he's been known for throughout this area. Gets five points for Dow. And I think that brings us up to our 160 pound weight class. Wrestling for Dow is actually the coach's son, Brennan Doyle. He is a senior this year. Uh, current record on the year 7-0, and 51-9 for the 2017-2018 record. Um, he's definitely a very accomplished wrestler. As I stated earlier in the program, if you take a look and see how Dennis runs his home and, and Brennan's accolades, you can tell that he's going to be uh, the same level of strictness when it comes to his team. Uh, with that being said, Brennan's actually going in there with a 4.0 unweighted GPA and one heck of an academic uh, record. Yeah, that's fabulous. Great all-around kid. For the Chemics, we have a, another very new wrestler. Uh, his name is Hunter Nagel. He is a sophomore. Uh, he does play some other sports, football as well as basketball, um, or at least he tried to do that his freshman year. Um, he'd like to pursue engineering and maybe even, if possible, play football at the collegiate level. Nice inside trip for Brennan Doyle. Takes Midland, now right, Midland High right to their butt. Gets two points for the takedown. Brennan resting off his toes. A lot of good wrestlers do. He's got a, he's working for a cradle. Had the cradle locked. Mr. Nagel was able to fight that off really well. Brennan's definitely the type of wrestler to stay busy for the most part. So uh, Mr. Nagel's definitely going to have to uh, turn it on here. He's gonna, ever going to hope to uh, start finding some holes in the offense and defense of Brennan Doyle. Brennan trying to separate those hips, trying to get a turn. Hunter quick to belly down and fight that off. Hunter Nagel got one. Uh, there was a loss of control. One point for an escape or back neutral. Score two to one, Dow High in the lead. I think Coach Donovan is going to be happy as long as uh, Nagel just keeps wrestling hard. Brennan Doyle in on a headlock right here. You know he's going to sit tight. and wrench that down tight. Yeah. Able to get the fall for Dow High. That's Brennan Doyle. Another six points, Dow High. 
again, with, with the Chemex being a youth program or very young, um, I, I don't think that's going to be a shock. Uh, Brennan Doyle is just such a solid wrestler. Even the next wrestler coming up for Dow, San Martin, just, again, very solid, very tough to compete. At 171, looks like Midland High does not have a wrestler to fill the spot today. Uh, Midland Dow's wrestler, Sam Martin, will be taking the void. Uh, real quick, Sam Martin is a three-time second all Valley League placer. He is a senior this year. This year, Last season, he had a record of 43 and 14, two-time regional qualifier. And honest to God, Chris, one of the nicest kids you will ever meet off the mat. I concur. All right. With a void for Midland at 171, that gives Dow High another six points for the team score, bringing it to 29-15. Dow High in the lead. Going up to 189. Uh, the Chemex are going to lead out with Sam Hine, uh, a senior this year, a two-time uh, regional qualifier, second place at the Saginaw Valley League. Uh, this, this, uh, oh, no, oh, we're looks mistaken. Like Midland I, I, voided away from, I think that uh, was a Merrick Belligiorno, uh, 11th grader from Dow High. This is where you just never know what coaches are thinking. So we were pursuing a match, thought what was going to happen, and ironically it didn't. Midland High's coach definitely has a plan. Not often do you see someone void away from a weight class. It's interesting to see uh, him do that. Definitely, uh, definitely wondering how that's going to play out for them as we get into the lighter weights. So Sam is going to give up some weight on this, but uh, it still should be an exciting match. Both of these guys know each other. They wrestled together in the Th Midland Thunder youth program and have worked their way up. So and This is for Dow and Aiden Bellagiorno, the brother to the gentleman we just saw taking the void at 189, Americ Bellagiorno. Aiden's 11th grader with current record of 6-0 and, oh, and a one-time uh, regional qualifier. Also has experience in the youth wrestling program as well as football experience. Two-year starter on the O-line for Dow High. As we get into these upper weights, you're definitely going to see a lot of standing up, a lot of battling up top, a lot of brute strength here. Yeah, it's a different style of wrestling from, from your 103s and, and those lighter weight classes. Both these guys physically dominated. Nice, nice attempt at that single leg there. Tried to pick that knee. Good slide attempt at a slide Sam. by. Sam Hine with the shot, goes out of bounds. Both neutral, nothing there. Sam Hine definitely seems to be the busy wrestler. Uh, Aiden Belgerner better be careful with that. He could get called for a stalling if he's not staying busy. A lot of guys pummeling, a lot of hand fighting. Sam likes to get to a Russian position. I think he's working for it. It's his comfort level for him. There it is, that two on one. He is in the Russian's position, not exactly where he'd probably want to be. He's out front with it more than off to the side. But Aiden, as an experienced wrestler, will not let up that position easily. The great contact, back neutral. Nothing so far. 15 seconds left in the first period. No score. Sam trying to go with those underhooks. Another attempt at a slide by. Chris, I love those slide bys from the overhook. They're uh, definitely starting to become more popular at this high school level. What I like about them so much, though, is that you don't see them coming, really. You don't really expect to see a guy over tie on your collar tie. That's what really throws people off. The next thing you know, you're hit with a slide by. Sam does a good job pulling those out of nowhere. Aiden, though, squaring off nicely. He's not letting him get those takedowns very easily. Aiden starting on bottom for Dow High, Sam on top. Nice spiral ride. But Aiden's on his feet. Aiden's on his feet. Sam comes in with a shot to try and prevent him from getting an escape. Aiden sprawls. Sam to an Iranian. Aiden mm. so tall. No points awarded there. Looks like we got blood time going on. Looks like Midland High sprung a leak. Yep. 
Again, that's that Heim tradition. <laughs> Hopefully they get that stopped as, as quickly as, as John's stoppage. Aiden some, getting some coaching. Coaches here take this opportunity not only to clean their guys up, but to uh, give them some tips, uh, some critiques on the side see what they can do to uh, help score points, especially in a match like this. 30 seconds down in the second period, uh, still 0-0. <clears throat> Aiden Bellagiorno for Dow, still down. Aiden up to his feet. Sam hanging out of that leg, really not trying to let up any points right now. Aiden able to sprawl away, nice break escape. contact. To go out of bounds, but there was that breaking contact. Aiden gets one point for the escape. The score now 1-0 Dow High. Nice deep underhook by Sam. Really trying to drive that over, get his guy off balance. Aiden staying square to his wrestler, not gonna give up anything easily. As you said, Sam is the smaller wrestler here, and you can definitely see it, but he's wrestling with everything he has. He's doing a great job wrestling up, uh, up in a weight class. And on a nice deep shot, able to get the two for Midland High. Well done there by Sam. Score now 2-1, 40 seconds left in the second period. Sam Hines got that forward pressure. He's trying to control those wrists, all while running forward, present, uh, preventing Aiden from basing up. Aiden able to base up, right up to his feet, fighting the hands. And no breaking contact Nothing. yet, no Nothing points yet. awarded yet. 10 seconds left in the period. If the period ends like this, Aiden will more than likely receive one point for an escape. Still trying to break contact. One, one mm. point awarded for Aiden Bellagiorno. Score now tied again, 2-2. Two, two. One second left in the second period. Going to the third, mid chemics are choosing down. Sam will be in base position. Aiden also go with that forward pressure, preventing Sam from, uh, from standing up. Now this is where Sam's really gonna feel that weight difference, is when he's beneath the weight of that bigger guy, still able to clear the defenses, get away, in on a leg. Two yeah, points two. for a reversal right there for Sam. Nice effort by the slightly smaller wrestler from the bottom. Coach Mike would like Sam to continue to work hard, keep applying pressure, work for additional points. Sam right now has got that cross face locked up on the tricep of the left arm of Aiden. A lot of moves can be ran from right there. Looks like Sam's going for that bundle. Bundle, yeah. Aiden's Aiden. working on hand control. Not gonna give it up easily. It's gonna be hard to turn, but he is circled around the head. Did not break that 90 degree plane again. No points awarded. Score right now, four to two. Midland High in the lead in this individual match here. 40 seconds left in the third period. Midland High would definitely like to claim this win right here. With a, with a team score of 35-15 down in the lead, Midland's gonna need every win that they can get right now. Aiden up to his feet. 
No breaking contact yet. Sam is great at going down, dropping to the ankle, preventing his guy from getting that one. Potentially dangerous call. I think it was on Sam's knee or Aiden's knee. Got to be careful when you rotate that foot outward towards someone's hips. Definitely a lot of issues can go with go on there. Nice safe call by the ref. Absolutely. Keep everybody safe so they can wrestle for the next week or this weekend. Absolutely. Speaking of that, this weekend uh, Midland actually will be going to a junior varsity tournament as well as a varsity tournament at Kettering University, or excuse me, Kettering High School. Um, should be some very good competition there. The Chemics were actually uh, faced last Wednesday, they faced Birch Run and Grand Blank at Bay City Central. And next weekend, uh, next week, excuse me, on Wednesday, they will be facing um, both the, I can't remember what it's what it was, excuse me, I apologize for that. No points were awarded to Aiden there at the break. Uh, still score 4-2, Midland up. Aiden goes back down. 15 seconds left in the third period. Aiden right back up to his feet again. Push out, no breaking control, no breaking contact. No points awarded. Aiden's back down, we got 10 seconds left in the third period. Aiden needs to make something happen and happen now if he wants to get that victory for his team. Aiden, the bigger guy, stands up. He's on his feet. He's doing a good job of getting to his feet. Now he's got throws a Throws him. Throws Sam. No. Oh, it's coming down to it. One point neutral. With zero time remaining. Great effort by Aiden. Yeah. Definitely would have had that too if he would have had just a second or two more on the clock. But hey, that's the way wrestling yeah. works. Midland High gets the victory, four to three. Definitely a good match between Aiden and Sam. That Very good last minute attempt. Three more points awarded to Midland High. Brings the score 35 to 18. That was our 215 pound weight class. Going up to our heavyweights now. From Dow High we have a Jason Fagan, a junior, with a current record of four and one. Uh, he is a 2018 Saginaw Valley League All-Academic Team for wrestling and for football. And he also did wrestle for Jefferson Middle School. For the Chemics, we have another freshman, uh, Dominic Melodia. Uh, he does play football, likes, uh, also an athlete in track and field. Again, he just doesn't have any experience, but uh, the Chemics are glad he's out to fill that, that 285 spot. He's uh, definitely progressing every practice, continues to learn. He's got the heart, just needs some, some more technical experience, and uh, he'll fill that class nicely. Jason Fagan, really heavy on the hands, definitely coming forward. It's going to be interesting to see how this freshman handles all that pressure coming from the upperclassmen. Nice snap down. No points awarded. Nothing. Nice continuous motion by Dominic of Midland, able to get back up to his feet. But yet, Jason Fagan able to seal the deal on that takedown. He's Two points half, awarded for yep. Dow. Jason Fagan running that power half, trying to turn his opponent here. Picks that near thigh. No near fall points awarded. Both wrestlers go out of bounds. Score 2 0. -oh. Dow high up. Midland High will go down to continue this period. Minute, five seconds left. You know, Chris, there's a lot of factors that play into this. Not only is this a rivalry here in the city of Midland, but uh, last year Dow had the win. Uh, Midland High last year had to give up a lot of seniors at the end of the year. So even though Midland's coach definitely left his stamp, left his mark, he uh, he's dealing with a young team. While Coach Dennis Doyle over here for Dow he hasn't quite had enough time uh, with the program to essentially leave his mark, but he does have an experienced older team. So a lot of factors at play. What I was astonished by was the number of athletes and wrestlers that have come out for Dow. Now, I understand that there's almost two teams. They can make two teams. So they're, they're definitely going to be a force to reckon with for the next four years or if not longer.
Jason Fagan keeping that forward pressure, really not giving the freshman Dominic much a chance to stand up. He is defending those hands well, but unfortunately defensive wrestling isn't always gonna seal the deal for a victory. Short time in the first period will end with a score of 2-0. Dow High, Jason Fagan still up. Midland High chooses top. That's an interesting choice. Yep. Midland High's coaches must be pretty confident in Dominic's uh, turning ability here on top, or at least his riding ability. They saw in that last period that getting away isn't gonna be very easy. Jason Fagan able to keep motion, able to get the two, not only two for reversal, but gets uh, Dominic right to his back. Unfortunately, he's got a minute and 40 seconds to go. Yeah. Jason Fagan able to pin the shoulders down, get the pin for Dow High. Good effort by both wrestlers. Six more points for Dow. Well, now we'll move to those, those smaller weight classes and uh, the action will be considerably quicker. It's no fault to any wrestlers, it's just they're faster and, and, and the action's at a higher level. Chemex are gonna send out Connor Shelb. He's a 10th grader. Uh, his re previous record was 23-21. Placed third in the Saginaw Valley League. Uh, he also plays soccer. He has 10 years youth experience. And for Dow, we have a Brennan Finney. He is a ninth grader. Current record of two and five. Uh, does play football for Dow. Uh, no youth wrestling experience. Kemick's working heavy on that head. Chris Probably. Shelb able to spin around, or Shelb able to spin around and get those two points. Nice busy wrestling for Connor Shelb. Got a half. Connor really singing that half in deep, armpit deep, chest to chest. Really good fundamentals right there. Brennan fighting with everything he has to keep those shoulders off the mat. Good job by Dow. Connor could work that arm up a bit. Connor trying to step over, trying to get in a sort of grapevine position, seals the deal. Connor for Midland High gets the uh, pinfall. Six points awarded for Midland. Moving to the 112 pound class. Like Dow's, Chemex uh, will be sending out Lauren Reward. She is also a 10th grader. Her record is 14 and eight. Uh, she also plays soccer. She has a 4.5 GPA. Um, and she is also a very experienced youth wrestler, has 10 years of experience. This should be a good matchup. For Dow, we have an Anthony Colmes, a ninth grader, current record on the year one and oh. Uh, he did wrestle for Jefferson Middle School, uh, and he did some wrestling in Nemwa. So we have two experienced wrestlers here. Probably more than likely to come down to technical skill. That's going to seal the deal for one of these wrestlers. They've been practice partners before, so they, they know each other for sure. It's always interesting seeing practice partners getting pitted against each other because they know their technique, they know their game, they know what to do and what not to do. Oh. But wrestling for different schools, their game is ever evolving. Right there, Dow able to spin around, get two points. That brings the score 2-0. We got a minute, 25 seconds left. One's got to fight to keep that from that knee getting to that the head to the knee. We don't want to see that. Anthony's doing a good job of keep running that head down. Trying to lock up that cradle. Any experienced wrestler will tell you in a cradle position that you always want to try and run that head to the knee, not the other way around. Anthony's doing a good job keeping that pressure on the neck, trying to push that head down to that knee to lock up on that cradle. Against Lauren. And Lauren there is definitely doing a good job sprawling out, fighting those hands, trying to prevent that lock, all while keeping her hips pointed down towards the mat. Looks like Anthony's got the lock up. 
but Lauren fighting so hard with those hips. She's stopping that forward progression with that hand control. Nice job by Lauren, constantly fighting, fought off the danger of a cradle. Anthony with that wide stance, you know he's got that forward pressure. Got an arm bar and a half. Lauren sits out to her butt and Anthony pressure right on the head, trying to crunch that head back down to that knee again. Seals the lock on the cradle. Not able to turn her to her back though. And that's one, period. that's one thing to mention about female wrestlers is that they actually have better hip pressure and are able to keep their hips more square to the mat. So that's uh, that you really saw Lauren's defense shine right there and fending off those pinning combinations. Good job by Lauren. Excellent. Nice forward pressure by Lauren right off the whistle. Hopping sides on the hip and preventing Anthony from progressing. Lauren trying to pick that inside ankle. Anthony's got the leg. He's trying to turn and face her, see if he can't get one, at least one point here. Still no change. Lauren's out front. Anthony able to sit through on the leg. Two points reversal for Anthony. Score now 4-0. Minute 30 left in the second period. Dow has the lead. Still trying to work that cradle position. It's getting closer. Lauren again, great at fighting off those hands, but Anthony just trying to fold her in half with that pressure on the head. Lauren, though, tough as nails, not giving up a thing to Anthony. Lauren staying sprawled out, keeping her hips. Anthony transitioning, right, looking bundle. like he has a bundle there. Not able to turn her. Again, Lauren with those hips, able to prevent being turned. Great defense from Lauren. May not look like a lot of action, but both wrestlers are putting their heart and soul again into this match. Anthony able to spin around on the head and turn her to her back. He's getting near fall. Gets the pinfall for Dow High. That was some good technical wrestling there. Nice job by both wrestlers. Good job. Dow, the busier wrestler, able to come out on top on that match. A lot of times, more than not, the busier wrestler will be the winner. Moving on to the 119 weight class. And for the Chemics, we'll have Brennan Anderson, 10th uh, grader. He's 2-1-1 uh, for the year. He also plays football at the defensive guard. He hopes to pursue a career maybe in the Army when he's done with high school. Um, he doesn't have any experience besides one year, last year as a freshman, so uh, he is continually learning. Brandon Scott, a ninth grader from Dow High with a one and one record on the year. Uh, he did wrestle for Jefferson Middle School, and he also plays football for Dow High. So we've got two, uh, what I would assume would be second year wrestlers going at it. This could be a good match. Midland in on a shot. Dow getting those legs back. Fighting off in a bundle position from the defense of a shot. Able to throw Midland right to their back. Got two points for the takedown. Three points awarded for near fall. Right now, score 5 0. Very busy wrestlers right here. Brandon Scott of Dow trying to run that half over. And Anderson of Midland really preventing any momentum right now. He knows he's down five nothing. He cannot give up anymore right now. Definitely fending off the half well, but right back down to his feet. We got a locked hands call on Dow. Dow returned Midland to the mat. And somewhere in that scramble, there was a locked hands on Dow. That is one point awarded to Midland for a technical violation. 
Cochran has got to do a good job of getting to his feet, get that escape point, then start wrestling from his feet, get that takedown. Brandon really good at getting up to his feet, really good at finding that hole in that pressure and just pushing through it. Brandon Scott, though, not, award, not allowing any points to be scored. Good returns. Good effort from both wrestlers right now. Again, another stand-up and another return. Brandon Scott's got to be careful on those returns, though. That ref will call a locked hands if he doesn't break that grip fast enough. I think he's definitely looking for it. Brandon Anderson of Midland does a swim through. Brandon Scott at Dow is hanging onto the head. He's not going to let him get those two points easily. Swims to a headlock. And Anderson of Midland able to get his head out, get two points for a reversal. That brings the score five to three. Dow High still in the lead in this match. Short time in the first period, around about five seconds. He's working that power half. End of the period there. Dow's decision, they're gonna defer. And Midland chooses down. Midland chooses down. After seeing the reversal from being on bottom in the first period, probably a wise choice by Midland's coach there. Definitely see if he can get this tied up in the very least. Brandon Scott at Dow. He's got to hope to hold his guy, not only hold him, try to get those turns, try to increase that lead. A two-point lead is far from a comfortable lead in wrestling. Absolutely. Where, uh, again, coaches are questioning something. A little discrepancy on the scoreboard there. We had to get the time set. Two-minute periods in high school, three two-minute periods. This is the start of the second one. Dow on top, five to three, also on top in the referee's position. Yeah, we've yet to see that uh, any overtime sudden death matches yet tonight. Brandon Scott really trying to trap down on a hit, but that nice is just escape. not working against Brendan Anderson of Midland. He's able to push right through that defense and stand up. Attempted a duck under, but it failed. Got caught in a headlock. Looks like he ducked under right into that headlock. Yep. That's why you got to clear the hands, clear the head. And the ref calls him out of bounds. We got but, not but not before a four point near foul was established, a three point near foul established. Score right now reads 10 4. I don't know if that's accurate. He's back. Brendan's back on his feet. Brendan Anderson definitely good at getting up to those feet. Very impressed by that. Able to turn away nice and easy. Get his one point for an escape. Scoreboard reading now 10 to 5. Dow High still on top in this match. One minute left in the second period. Trying to throw that elbow, trying to get that duck under again. Brandon Scott just hung onto the head there. Good thing the ref didn't see that. He would have stopped that for an illegal move. But Brandon Anderson got the two. Good effort. Score now reads 10 to 7. Brandon's got good pressure on those hips, but he's got to be careful. He's got to get off those hips too. He's got to keep working. He's got his half available, but. Chose not to use it because Scott's got great hand control. Any wrestler knows that being on top, you do not want to get any hip separation. You want to stick to that bottom man like glue. Able to turn Brandon Scott from Dow. Brandon getting near fall points here. Looking for the pin, 18 seconds to go. Can he get it? Brandon uh, Scott awarded. gets pinned by Brandon Anderson of Midland. Good stick right there. Fought from the bottom the whole time Brennan Anderson did and able to come out on top with a pinfall for his team. Well done. Should have one more weight class at 125.
The coverage of this wrestling meet is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on the shows like this one, sign up for a media producer workshop. You will learn how to be a video producer, create a studio program, use professional video cameras, and edit your video using Final Cut Pro editing software. The cost is just $45, which includes the annual access user fee. Call 837-3474 to sign up. The next workshops are on January 9th, 10th, and, and the 12th. You can learn more about MCTV at www.cityofmidlandmi.gov forward slash MCTV or follow us on Facebook. Well, Chris, did we find out what's going on? Do we have another weight class to, uh, to partake in? At this point, I, I, I'm not sure. It looks like since this is a quad meet, looks like maybe Dow's going to do an exhibition or it may be a Jamie mat a JV match. All right. So Just if that last match was the last one in consolation. Oh, we might uh, actually just have one more match. Looks like we're sorting out some details here on the sideline. In consolation, Dow actually has the lead in the team score of 47 to 30. Well, that was a mean headlock right yes, there. Yes, it Chris. was, yeah. That's, that's a Bay County wrestler. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry we're not sure about the name, so. Definitely an electric matchup here, that's for sure. Could just be the coaches trying to get some more experience. I will take this time to also say a little bit more about MCTV. Uh, we want to see all the new ways that you can share your, your story through MCTV. Now you can create a TV show, put your videos on YouTube, promote your programs on social media, and even create an audio podcast to reach a whole new audience. To learn more, call MCTV at 837-3474 today. You can find our YouTube channel and podcast by searching for MCTV Networks, Community Voices. An interesting fact for the Chemex. Uh, Nick Norris, who is not here tonight, but he holds the, uh, the most team points so far for this year. He's closely followed by uh, Daniel Reward, Hunter Carey Spears, Connor Shelb, and following in that pursuit is Lauren Reward. Uh, Nick and Sam Hine are matched up nicely for the number of takedowns while Daniel Reward and Sam Hine are struggling to see who can get the most reversals. We keep track of that just for uh, the banquet at the end of the year, plus the, the stats that are, are, are important to some of the wrestlers. Going back to uh, Dennis Doyle, telling, uh, I mentioned that he runs a, a tight ship when it comes to his team, not only his team, but his home life. And I said, if you take a look at Brendan Doyle's accolades, you would be able to tell that uh, Dennis Doyle does not fool around as a father or as a coach. Uh, Brendan Doyle, as I said, has a 4.0 unweighted GPA, three-time Booster Club Scholar Athlete for football and wrestling, three-time All-SVL Academic Team for football, two-time uh, SVL Academic Team for wrestling, 2018 MHS FCA All-State Academic Dream Team for football. Definitely... A lot of academic honors there. <clears throat> He's also a three-time regional qualifier, two-time state qualifier, and a fifth-place finisher last year at the state finals. So if that says anything about Dennis Doyle, it's that uh, to keep your eye on this team, see what he does in these upcoming years. I, I, would, I would expect to see him potentially, hopefully, to make it to the state finals again this year. Well, with two coaches, the way we got them right now between Dennis and uh, Mike, that uh, you, you can't expect anything less than, than this rivalry to keep getting more intense and more electric, especially with the way Dow just raked in wrestlers this year. It's almost unbelievable the way their team grew. On the mat right now, we have uh, Haley Bates for the Chemex. Uh, her normal weight is 130. She does have a little experience in the freestyle, the... Uh, um, the freestyle wrestling. She also does band. Someday she'd like to be a crim crime scene investigator. And she does have three years of experience uh, in the youth program or youth setting. She had her best, uh, best placement was six. And uh, also um, 
she, she does wrestle for additional teams, so she's trying to gain experience as much as she can. Wrestling for Dow is actually one of the Bates twins, so I think both wrestlers here carry the last name of Bates. Uh, oddly enough, there's actually two sets of twins for Dow High. Uh, Bates for Dow here, he is a second year wrestler. I had the pleasure first year of being able to help out with the JV portion for Dow High. And already right now I can tell you he's definitely made tremendous strides in the off season. It's gonna be interesting to see how these two stack up. Excuse me, uh, the gentleman wrestling for Dow High, his last name is Bateman, I apologize. <clears throat> uh, Bateman twins, and I would assume their parents are actually MCTV volunteers. Uh, Bateman here with a score of 2-0 right now at 119 pounds is what's listed. A lot of forward pressure, a lot of hand fighting going on, low score. 10 seconds left in the first period. Haley reaching back for that head. That's probably not the smartest move, especially from a down position. One of the key things you learn is don't ever reach back for the head. It provides the other wrestler an opportunity to get an easy half in. Haley's choosing down, bottom position. When you're down by two points in wrestling, you definitely want to choose that down position. You have more opportunity there of scoring points than anywhere else on the mat. Bateman again with that heavy pressure forward. Working a spiral ride or a half and an inside thigh pry. Bateman really biting that ankle, preventing her from standing up. She gets right up to her feet. Bateman reaching over, getting his hips under him. Haley driving. Loss of control, out of bounds. One point for Haley. Scored now 2-1 with Bateman in the lead. On their feet. Unfortunately, uh, the Bateman brothers look so much alike, I really couldn't tell you which one is which. I do know that their names are Gabe and Lucas, though. Really heavy on the hands. Oh, Haley drives him to his back. For a two takedown. Bateman able to go right to his belly. Two takedown. The score now 3-2. Haley from Midland High has the lead. The nice legs. She has, she has both legs in. Putting a lot of pressure, trying to extend him out. Working for a double arm bar. Tons of forward pressure there. Gabe was able to get a reversal there, bringing the score four to three. Trying to run a turn here. He's got a half Nelson picking that near leg, that near thigh, trying to toss her over on that hip. Haley does a good job defending the hands. Bateman right back to that half. Half in that inside thigh, trying to turn her hips over. Haley great at keeping those hips square and flat to the mat. Got a one count, but that was all. No, so points, no points awarded. Nice job by Haley, good fighting right there. Both these wrestlers busy. You can oh. see that they're both breathing a little heavier. They're definitely trying. Score 4-3, going neutral for the start of the third period. Haley really heavy with those hands. She's not afraid to get in there and start pushing people around. Gabe, nice snap down, spin around, trying to get two. Haley snags the leg, not, oh, two points awarded yep. for Bateman. Cross face attempt, a nice cross face attempt. Haley controlling that arm. Yeah. 
trying to run that half. Still got the half in. Haley not giving up anything easily. She's got her elbows pinched. That's, that's the key to avoid that half. Aiman's got to be careful here because as he runs out to the side to throw that half, Haley could sneak right out the back door. When you're on top in wrestling, you want to, for the most part, leave no space between your and their hips. Yeah, he was As able to grab a leg, but couldn't hold on. A little bit malicious on that cross yeah. face. Can't wind it up, Can't the ref says. Up. Yep. It's definitely a persuasion move, but got to keep safety first. Score 6-4 now. Dow still in the lead. 30 seconds left in the third period. This should be the last match of the evening, too, for, for these two teams together. They both have uh, another full match or another team to face after this is concluded. And two reversal for Haley. That brings the score 6-6. We could actually see our first overtime match of the night. As time winds down, that's and exactly what we have. Sudden, sudden death. First to score a point in one minute of overtime wins. Good comeback for Haley. One minute on the clock, first takedown wins. It it's gonna to come down to who wants it more. There has to be a sense of urgency here. You have, you have one minute and that one minute goes very quickly. Bateman trying to control the head in the wizard position, gets right up to a front headlock to a snap down. Trying to spin, get two. Haley trying to catch a leg. Haley not gonna give it up that easily. She's gotta keep hanging, spinning to hanging. hope. She's hanging on the leg and the Bateman two is awarded. with that long body able to sprawl out, spin and get his two. Sudden death victory for Dow High's Bateman. Good match, that was a good match. Way to end the, end the duel here. So again, uh, you're watching the Midland High versus H.H. Dow High wrestling meet on the MCTV network. MCTV can be found on Charter Spectrum, channels 188 through 191 in Midland. You can also find MCT, on, excuse me, on MCTV under channel 99 on AT&T's U-verse. Check the Midland Public Schools website at www.midlandps.org or the Sunday edition of the Midland Daily News for more playback times. View this program online at the Midland Public Schools YouTube channel. Again, it was a pleasure hosting with you this evening. Uh, great matchups for both teams, and I wish them both luck into the future and the remaining of the season.